Pasi, you're on mute. <laughs> it automatically goes to mute. I don't know how, but we are muting. Okay. Uh, thank you, John. Okay, before, welcome back after the break. Before we went for the break, uh, we were looking at um, Second Corinthians chapter 5, uh, verses 14 and 15. Uh, and it reads like this, For the love of Christ compels us, because we judge thus, that if one died for all, then all died, and he died for all, that those who live should live no longer for themselves, but for him who died for them and rose again. Uh, just let's look at a few statements here or phrases in this verse. Um, uh, of these verses, it says, Christ died for us, okay, uh, which are the other phrases that talk about the word us here. First one, we see that Christ died for us. Any other phrases that talk about us here in these verses, these two verses? The love of Christ compels us, okay? Uh, Christ died for us. He laid down his life for us. Uh, one died for all, okay? And he died for all. So if you look at these statements, uh, it shows for us that uh, Christ's suffering on the cross, his death, his substitutionary suffering, his substitutionary death, that was for us and for all because he says christ died for us he laid down his life for us uh, one died for all and he died for all so we see that um, in these statements we see uh, you know that the, uh, that christ substitutionary suffering and his substitutionary death was for us and for all okay so this scripture also revealed to us that uh, you know God's love prompted Christ's substitutionary suffering. Uh, when Christ died on the cross uh, or he went on the cross on our behalf, it was God's love that was being demonstrated. Uh, God's love was being uh, defined uh, by his sacrifice, by what he did, by taking our place. Uh, uh, you know, dying for our sins, taking our sorrows, our grief, our pain, our shame, our thirst. It's we also see that on the cross that God's love was displayed uh, when Jesus Christ gave up His um, life. We also see that He was a true friend uh, with the greatest love because uh, John chapter fifteen was thirteen. Can one of you read that, please? John chapter fifteen was thirteen. John 15, 13. No one wants to read. John 15, 13, greater love has no one than this, than to lay down one's life for his friends. Thank you. Uh, greater love has no one than this. Uh, and we see that uh, we see God's greatest love here uh, displayed for us, uh, defined for us, because he laid down his life um, for us. Okay. Plus, I just wanted to share something. I sometimes think that, you know, some of you just... Uh, join class but i don't think if you are present uh because other than uh sibikenu silutoni uh john 
and uh, I think once in a while it's Abu Bakr and uh, Isaac Pandi. Um, you know, none of the others really uh, talk or say anything. Um, so I'm not sure we have 14 of us, 14 of you all in the class, 13, sorry. Sometimes it's even 16 or 17, but absolutely no response. Um, nobody wants to read the verses. There's no answers to questions. So uh, it would be good if there is no class participation. Otherwise, uh, it's going to get very demotivating for me as well. Uh, and I'm sometimes wondering if uh, if you're already in class, if you're listening. I know it is uh, Monday morning. All of us have our Monday morning dreams. Uh, but uh, you know, I request all of you to um, participate, uh, make it more uh, engaging in class. Uh, there's just, uh, you know, just a few more chapters about three or four more left in the end of course, but you know, uh, there should be some kind of good positive response that would make a good feel for me as well and for uh, the others in the class. Okay. Okay, so we looked at um, you know Christ suffering, he he did it uh, all for us and he uh, did it out of his love. Okay. Uh, when Christ was raised uh, Christ was raised when we were justified. Okay, Romans chapter four. Okay, uh, so Abu Bakr says my voice is not clear; it's echoing. What about the others? Is my voice echoing? It's okay, boss. Hey, John. Okay. Sri says a little bit. What about Anita? Is my voice echoing, Anita? You wake up. Can you just give me some feedback, please? Okay. Now is it better? My talk will be soft. Okay, now is it a little better? Or is it still echoing? It's the same, I think. It's the same? So the problem is it's the same? It's in Jama. Sorry, I have a record. Can you say it again, please? Can't hear you. So, uh, is it because that it's echoing that you're not able to hear or understand me? Is that uh, right? Yes, ma'am. I don't hear your voice clearly. It's echoing here. I don't get what you are saying. Okay. So is it, is it always like this or is it only today's class? Is it always been like this or is it only today's class? I think it's been like this person. Like I, I for, for me it, it feels the same. Oh, so it's not very clear. It is changing. clear, but it is it can be more clearer. Okay. Because when we usually the other classes, right? It it is a little more clearer. Okay. I'm not sure if that's the reason uh, Brother Abu Bakr said this. Also, sorry about that. If I had known that earlier, we could have uh, changed the laptop. Uh, okay, let me see what I can do in uh, the next class. Okay, but for today, maybe we we'll have to just uh, do with this. Okay, maybe we can 
मुझे वो ड्री टू द लेसन और डू थिंक आई नीड टू बी टू सम द लेसन दैट यू हैव नॉट हर्ड ओके लेट्स से टेक सम फीडबैक प्लीज टू हेल्प दिस इज नो पॉइंट इन मी प्रोग्रेसिंग आई हैव लॉट ऑफ टाइम आई कैन ऑलवेज गो बैक टू द प्रीवियस लेसन्स एंड आई कैन री डू इट maybe with a bell sound so with that help can you please give me some feedback share your thoughts please uh if you find it difficult to unmute and speak maybe you can type it in the chat section but the feedback would really help so i'm just waiting for a couple of you to give me your feedback uh first i think it is okay just that uh let, let more focus for us um we have to like focus it more because the because of the voice but i think we we were able to understand for, at least from my side okay. uh, i'm able to understand so thank you john uh what about silo tohi and subhashish would you want to share your feedback uh i agree with john so it's okay okay thank you is there any Uh, yes, pastor. Actually, we can understand, but sometimes actually it's echoing. Okay. Maybe because uh, the screen has nothing much other than just an old the table because it's a bare room. Um, we don't have much furniture, so I think if I fill in the room with some furniture, then uh, it may not fit. It's difficult or very to change the place or. Let's see. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll continue. Uh, then we have to just pray that uh, it's not the full and it's too clear for you. Uh, we're looking at uh, Christ's substitutionary suffering on the cross, uh, and uh, we saw that He did it all for us, uh, and He did it out of His love. um the next one is that uh, he, he is raised when he there justified romans chapter 4 was 25 they want to read that please romans 4 25 okay thank you john who was delivered up because of our offenses and was raised because of our justification thank you so we see that uh, our offenses is what caused him uh, to be uh, delivered up uh, and that because that was the reason that he was crucified because of our offenses our sins uh, he took upon himself Uh, the consequences of our offenses, and so this again is the substitutionary work of Christ. Uh, it's also interesting to note that Christ was raised uh, because of our uh, justification. Okay, uh, this implies that uh, when our sins were paid in full, and uh, when we were declared righteous in God's sight, was when Christ was uh, raised back to life. Okay, so we see that uh, you know we know Jesus was uh, dead and he was buried. Just two days, the third day he rose again. And uh, when he paid or he made the full sufficient and perfect sacrifice, and after he made the sacrifice, you know we all were declared righteous in God's sight. Was when Christ was raised. So uh, what do we mean by this? That Christ's resurrection. Is coming back to life from the dead uh, is a proof or indication of the reality of our justification. Okay, so how do we know that we are justified in God's sight or made right in God's sight? That we are no longer uh, sinners in God's sight, but we are uh, seen as His children, His sons, daughters. We are part of His family. How do we know that? Uh, Uh, we are no longer enemies with God, but friends with God. Is uh, you know that Christ's resurrection is a proof or an indication, uh, you know, that uh, we have been 
justified. Okay, and we are justified by faith. Okay, so uh, the resurrection has an essential place in our redemption, in us being redeemed from sin, from being slaves of sin, or being slaves of Satan. Uh, it's because what demonstrates um, uh, the perfect Father's, uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 what them, sorry, uh, just because uh, uh, it demonstrates God the Father's perfect satisfaction with the Son's work on the cross. So when Jesus paid for our sins, uh, you know, God the Father was fully satisfied uh, for the sins. Uh, uh, of the whole mankind, he was it was justified in his uh, in his sight because he's a just God, he's a just judge, and uh, the full payment for sins had to be made because he's just because he's righteous, and uh, we see that uh, the Old Testament sacrifices just kind of covered up the sin for a temporary period, but it was not uh, you know able to justify. Uh, the full penalty for sins or the righteous demands of a righteous God, and hence uh, Christ came and He made the full sufficient perfect sacrifice, um, uh, and uh, and it was perfect uh, uh, even though He was sparing the sins of the whole world. Okay. The next day is where He bore our sins on the cross. Uh, you know, He bore it in His uh, body. Uh, in one of you read First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four, please. First Peter chapter two, verse twenty-four. Anyone can do first Peter chapter two verse twenty-four. First Peter two twenty-four, for he himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we having died to sins might live for righteousness, by whose stripes you were healed. Thank you. Uh, here it says that he bore our sins in his own body. Uh, and uh, he took upon himself or he bore upon himself our mistakes, uh, and he endured the consequences of our sins, um, of our trespasses, of our iniquities, um, and he endured it all for us. Okay. So the results. What are the results of his uh, substitutionary suffering and death on the cross? Uh, the first thing is that, you know, he died for our sins so that we may live in righteousness, okay? Uh, because it says here that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness. Uh, you know, he took upon himself our sins so that he can give us his righteous life, okay? So he could... He took our place as a sinner and he made us righteous. So that is one of the results of Christ's substitutionary suffering on the cross. The second thing in this work we read is by whose stripes you were healed. Okay, so we see that uh, Christ's substitutionary suffering on the cross brings healing and wholeness in our total man, uh, in our or our body, in our spirit, and in our soul. And it says here, it does not say by whose stripes you uh, can be healed. It does not say by which stripes you could be healed, or by which stripes you will be healed if you do this, this, this. But it's also it's talking about something that is a completed act. It says by whose stripes you were healed. It's already done. It's completed. Uh, the healing for our bodies is already uh, being received, and we need to just believe that and walk in that healing. Okay, so you are already healed. All you need to do is uh, receive it for yourself, believe it for yourself, and appropriate for what? Um, self. Okay. 
Then we see that on the cross, uh, when Christ substituted in our place uh, uh, of his substitution suffering, we see that he became sin for us. Second uh, Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. So you can one of you read Second Corinthians 5, verse 21, please. Second Corinthians five twenty one. For he met him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Well, thank you. So here we see that uh, Christ knew no sin. He was sinless, uh, but for our sakes, he took upon our sins upon him, uh, self. Okay? Uh, and he was made a sinner uh, in our place. Uh, he became to be there. Uh, he was sinless and we were sinful, but he took our place and he became who we were. Uh, he took upon himself our sins, he took upon himself our guilt and our shame uh, to deliver us and make us what we ought to be. Okay, what he had destined us to be, what he had purposed us to be, what he had planned for us to uh, be. Okay, uh, so the whole essence of Christ's substitutionary suffering is this, that though he was rich, uh, though he was rich in the sense that he was God, um, he had the nature, the attributes, the characteristics of God, uh, he was holy, perfectly holy, utterly holy, he was sinless, uh, though he was rich, but yet for our sake, he became poor. Okay? He limited himself. Uh, he let go of uh, some of his uh, uh, godly attributes that made him God. He let go of uh, his greatest aside so that he can understand us, so that he can become one like us, one among us. And he entered into our experience um, so that through his, uh, you know, uh, through our poverty, he, you know, uh, you know, he can identify with us. And he entered into our experience that we, uh, in our own frailties, in our own frustrations, in our own uh, despair, in our depths of despair and brokenness and pain, uh, in, the, of, in our own poverty, that we could become a rich. That means we could inherit uh, the nature of God, the blessings of God, the standing with God. Um, the, uh, you know, the favor of God, uh, and when we talk about standing with God, you know, when God made us righteous, um, God the Father looks at His Son and us at the same level, okay? It is like, you know, Jesus is here and we are here, we are on the same level. God looks at us just like He looks at His Son. He loves us just like He loves His uh, Son. This is uh, an amazing uh, truth, uh, which sometimes uh, kind of really, uh, you know, sometimes we grapple with it, we can't comprehend it, we can't understand, but this is the greatness of the God we serve, we worship, uh, that he loves us just the same way he loves his son, and he looks at us and he has placed us in the same level uh, as he's placed us as his uh, son. You know, we the moment we are justified, uh, we are all seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's the position that uh, uh, you know, God the Father has given to us. So Christ entered uh, our poverty so that we can uh, experience his richness, we can become a rich like he is, and we can taste uh, and uh, experience all of who he is. Okay? Uh, the other results, uh, the consequences of Christ's uh, uh, you know, substitution suffering on the cross is that he took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. He took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. So can one of you read Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, please?
Matthew chapter 8, verses 16 and 17. When evening had come, they brought to him many who were demon possessed, and he cast out the spirits with a word and healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, He himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Thank you. Uh, so here we see that uh, Jesus gospel uh, writing and telling and quoting Isaiah chapter 53 uh, verse 4. Um, so we see that what Isaiah had spoken prophetically uh, that what Christ would accomplish on the cross that he would take our diseases and bear our sufferings and our sicknesses uh, was accomplished and we see also that uh, Matthew writing about this uh, in uh, in Matthew chapter 2, verse 16 and 17 is, is quoting from Isaiah chapter 52, verse 4, uh, where he's talking about uh, Christ healing the sick. And, uh, you know, and Matthew says this is a fulfillment of what uh, Isaiah the prophet had, had uh, uh, spoken about Jesus Christ. Okay, so it does not mean that, you know, uh, when, uh, when Matthew is quoting this, uh, in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 and 17, it was specifically that, uh, you know, Christ um, uh, was, you know, took upon our infirmities, bore our sicknesses, or healed all of your sick, uh, was just for that very instant, or that very day, uh, when Christ, uh, you know, healed all who uh, were sick, in, who were demon possessed, who were brought to him, healed them uh, with a word, it's not specifically only for that day um, or when the event was recorded uh, in Matthew chapter 8 verse 16 um, uh, or it does not refer only to the healing ministry of Christ when he was on the earth um, you know uh, but, uh, but we see that you know Christ on the cross when he died uh, he accomplished uh, or he fulfilled what Isaiah had prophesied that, you know, he took upon himself all the sicknesses, all the diseases uh, of the entire mankind. So it was not just specifically for those people who were there uh, on that day when Jesus healed and which Matthew writes about in um, uh, Matthew chapter uh, uh, 8, but, and it's also not something that is only uh, pertaining to uh, Christ's ministry when he was ministering to people and healing the sick, um, uh, uh, you know, when he was on the earth, but it is also relevant for us today and relevant uh, throughout uh, time uh, till Christ comes back again. And, uh, you know, um, till that time, we can, we can uh, uh, receive. Um, uh, you know, the full benefits of the cross in terms of Christ taking our sicknesses, um, uh, our diseases and bearing our sicknesses. And it was something that was accomplished on the cross. Um, and it also shows that it's something that we can benefit from his substitutionary suffering. Uh, even today, all of us can benefit. Even tomorrow, everybody can benefit in the generations to come. Uh, can benefit, and it's not just for a few of them uh, that are mentioned in Matthew chapter 8, verse 16. So, we will look at what are the implications of the Spirit of God, you know, uh, getting Matthew to quote uh, Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, in, uh, in the text that he was writing, or when he was talking about Jesus healing the sick. Uh, there are two important uh, conclusions we can, uh, can be drawn from this. Uh, the first thing is that, um, uh, you know, when Christ uh, bore our sicknesses and the pain is some uh, on the cross is so that we can experience a full healing and full wholeness in our uh, bodies. So the ultimate purpose of Christ bearing our sickness and pain is so that we can be delivered from our sicknesses uh, we can be delivered from everything that oppresses us, that depresses us, uh, and from every demonic oppression. 
again. The second uh, thing that uh, the important conclusion that we can draw from here is that you know, um, you know, when Christ bore it all for us on the cross, when He bore our sicknesses and disease uh, on the cross, we can also share this good news with others, uh, and we can also minister healing and deliverance uh, to others based on the finished work of the. Cross, based on what Jesus has accomplished on the cross, based on uh, the benefits that we can receive from the cross. Okay, so two things here. Uh, this is not something that there was just for a certain period of time, for a certain group of people. That is only for the Israelites or uh, for the time period when Jesus was on the earth, that people could experience miracles and healings uh, from all their sicknesses, from their demonic oppression. But uh, Christ's substitution suffering on the cross is something that uh, it takes so that we can not only be forgiven of our sins, but he can also take upon himself or be bore upon himself our, our sicknesses, our pain, our diseases. Uh, and so we can experience healing and wholeness in our bodies. Because remember, by his stripes, you were healed, you are already healed. All you need to do is just declare and believe it and receive it in your bodies. The second thing that uh, you know we could uh, uh, receive from what Christ has done, his substitutionary suffering on the cross, is what he's accomplished on the cross. So we can take it, uh, take this good news to people that, um, and we know that many of them, uh, you know, are suffering in demonic strongholds, bondages. Uh, suffering because of pain, sickness, disease, and we can declare the finished work of the cross over their bodies. And once they receive that healing, uh, you know, uh, they will know what Christ has done for them. They will know the true and living uh, God. So we can minister healing and deliverance based on the finished work of the uh, cross. Okay, uh, like Jesus said, when you go and lay hands on the sick, they will be healed. Uh, you know, you don't have to doubt whether that will happen. You don't have to uh, be afraid that if you pray for somebody who is unwell, who is sick, uh, you know, whether they'll be healed. Uh, all you need to do is already believe that you're already healed because of what Christ has done. Uh, by his stripes, they are already healed. You just have to pronounce it. Uh, stand in faith, stand in the gap for them. Uh, declare it over their bodies and um, see God move and work in their lives. Okay. Any questions? Any doubts? Any questions or any doubts so far? Okay, so we look at uh, another benefit of uh, Christ's substitution suffering on the cross. It became a curse for us. Uh, Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Can one read that please? Galatians chapter 3 verse 13. Galatians 3:13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Okay, thank you. Uh, so here we see that, uh, yeah, you know, um, in Galatians chapter 3, verse 13, um, the two things that we can learn here is uh, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, and we already uh, studied about this in chapter 7, okay, um, how Christ redeemed us uh, from the curse of the law. Uh, but we will look at the second implication of this uh, this verse, the first implication uh, we had looked at in chapter 7, where we looked at uh, Christ redeeming us from the law. The second implication here is that Christ set us free uh, from the curse of the law. The, the law brought curse of uh, disobedience for disobedience. Uh, you know, we couldn't keep the law, uh, we couldn't keep the righteous demands of the law. And hence, we were people who always broke the law. Uh, we were disobedient to God. And uh, as a result of that, there were curses that were pronounced if we do not obey the law. And these curses 
or God said would happen are listed in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 16. So you see uh, God telling the people of Israel that if you keep the law, these are the blessings you will receive. If you don't keep the law, if you break it, these are the curses you will uh, receive. And the curses are listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to uh, 68. Okay? And this curses could include failure, uh, you know, poverty, oppression, any kind of sickness and disease, guilt, shame, brokenness, uh, human oppression, uh, all kind of curses. Okay. Now, when Christ suffered on the cross, when he suffered in our place, uh, in his substitutionary suffering, we see that he became a curse for us, and hence he set us free from all the curses of the law. So all that is written in Deuteronomy chapter 28, verses 15 to 68, does not keep a hold on us anymore, or does not imply or apply to our lives anymore, even though we break the law so many times, is because uh, you know, Christ uh, in our place, uh, in substitution suffering, became a curse so that he will set us free from all the curses of the law. Okay. Any questions, any doubts about this? Okay, uh, we move on. And the last point here we see is uh, when Christ took our place, uh, he suffered on our behalf, he tasted death for every one. Okay, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. And then if you read that please, Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9. But we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels for the, the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor that he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Thank you. So here we see that Jesus not only took upon himself our sins, our sicknesses, our poverty, our curses, but he even died in our place. He died on our behalf. Uh, and Jesus experienced death for every individual person. When we're talking about death, uh, we're not just talking about the physical death, but we're talking about eternal death. Okay? Uh, he died so that we all can receive eternal life, so that we can all be with God where He is. Okay? Um, and we can enjoy eternal life uh, forever and not die with eternal death. So, um, Christ, by dying on the cross, he uh, died in our place, he placed it back for everyone so that we can receive eternal life. Okay. Any questions, any doubts about this chapter? Anything that you were not able to hear clearly, understand, uh, I can share those points again please sorry for the, the problem with the voice and the sound i'll try to do something about it anything that you did not hear clearly is echoing and you want me to explain again or any point that you do not understand, we want you to explain. Abu Bakr is here. Anything that you want me to explain again that you could not hear clearly? This left class, I think. Okay.
if you have any uh, you know, problems in understanding uh, some of the things, so you can hear clearly. Uh, the video uh, lecture will be posted in the uh, stream page. You can access the video and you can hear without the hearing. Okay. Okay, if not, uh, there's no questions. No doubts, nothing I need to explain again. Okay, other than the sound, is there any other feedback of uh, the classes you would want me to uh, work on? Please share your feedback. Please feel free to share. Am I too fast? Is it, uh, the case of uh, uh, going through the contents, is it okay or is it too fast? Is it too rushed? Do you want me to go a little bit slower? It is okay, Pastor. It's okay. Thank you, John. Because uh, we're almost finishing the portions and we have a lot of time, so I could still do some of the chapters you want me to do again. So please feel free to ask. Anyone else has any other suggestions, any areas of improvement for the class? Anything on share? Okay, if not, uh, we'll end class here. Okay. I'll just wait for a couple more uh, minutes if anyone wants to be. Any suggestions, areas of improvement, you can write in the chat section. Okay, if not, we'll end class here. Uh, thank you all for joining class. Um, I'll see you on uh, Wednesday. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a blessed day and a good day. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sri Guru.